Hey everybody, this is Hav Sean from uh, Having Fun Repairs, uh, and hopefully this is a very quick uh, repair video. Uh, I've got an Instapot um, Duo Plus. We're using a slow cook setting. We have it set on more, and uh, disregard this countdown timer because we keep resetting it. But I've um, been trying to cook a meal for well over 16 hours now on the more setting and potatoes just aren't getting softened enough and I checked the temperature and we're getting about see what it comes up to 194 degrees Fahrenheit probably bounce around there a little bit yeah, we'll say 194. Uh, if you look online concerning this uh, the slow cooker function, the less setting is around 180 to 190. The normal setting, 180 190. Normal setting is uh, around 190 to 200, and more should be around 210. So it's just not getting up to temp. Um, I'm going to take this food out. Uh, we're going to let this cool down and we're going to take a look at something. Alright. Got this guy up on my work table. Um, for those of y'all who are interested in specific model number, Dual Plus 60 V2 whatever year that came out with uh, this one came out I don't know um, <clears throat> nor the bit of damage on the base uh, that is not the reason for the issue that I believe this is currently having uh, that was done during ship it ship me ship when we first bought it and so I checked the internals at that time and everything looked just fine so it was only cosmetic damage. Could have sent it back, but we didn't. But anyway, so what I think is going on, we're going saying there are three uh, temperature ranges. Uh, 180, 190 on low, 190 to 200 on medium or normal, I think. Uh, less normal, and then uh, 200 to 10 on more so I'm hoping what I find out when I take this apart which we'll do it here in a second is maybe there's an issue of one of the heating coils or and I have no clue if there are multiple heating coils or if it's just one wound unit like what you'd see on a stove top uh, I just don't recall because it's been a while since I've opened this up uh, so if there is and hopefully we can uh, re resolve that issue and then test this out to see if it will uh, produce hotter temperatures from previously shown. So let's go ahead and take this apart. Okay, after taking off and doing a little bit of a visual inspection, I'm not really seeing any issues standing out at me. Um, you have your main power board here. Looks like it's designed to create 5 volts. Uh, a couple 5 volt rails. And probably a few other voltages. It's kind of funny that the fuse and I think that's a relay. Everything appears to be stamped and rated for 250 volts. Making me think that maybe this was dual voltage. I'm not too sure. Uh, fuse is perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check the resistance. 
between certain components and these wires. Now I'm not just doing a continuity check and ask, trying to see a beep. What I want to do is actually check the resistance. Um, you know, because as this thing does heat up, and I'll be wiggling things around, there's always the potential that there is a maybe small micro fractures in the solder and different connecting termination points. Uh, here is our heating element. So I'm primarily concerned with these two wires. They appear to be connected to the board. But with a resistance check, I can see the total value of resistance in ohms. And then I can move things around at the same time to see if that changes that value. And if it does, then that's potentially our issue. Standoff on this resistor here is pretty significant. So I'm willing to believe that there's a lot of heat dissipation around several of these components. Caps look fine. I don't see anything bulging. Not quite able to make out the brand. But they appear to be in fairly good shape. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next. Take a lot of resistance measurements. So uh, next section, you know, definitely see me doing those types of measurements. Now, small deviations, I'm not too concerned about as I tug on the wires, but bigger swings I am. I also have to account for the conformal coating on the board and that it's not the conformal coating that's creating a higher measurement, uh, but just me pulling and tugging on the wires themselves. And so that's what I do I find over the next section of that you see being fast forward in front of you, in which case I do find some wires that I reflow with some uh, lead-based solder and then put the, the item back together and test it out, which you'll see in this next part. Okay, after putting it back together, I uh, plugged it in, set it to more on slow cooker, and it's been running for roughly uh, two hours. I want to say auto populate six hours up there, and we're sitting at three hours and 57 minutes remaining. Uh, so one of the reasons why I was not getting a good uh, connectivity with my multimeter pros is because there's a little bit of confirmal coating on the board. So that might have lent the hand to me not getting a good measurement. Uh, how, regardless though, um, I went ahead and just put in fresh solder on that circuit board, as you would saw in the sped up section. And we're gonna check the temperature to see if that's helped out with the heating element. If not, then the board is working. Um, the only thing I could think of is maybe the heating elements just getting old. Or it's worn out or there's something specifically wrong with it. Alright. So, have this filled up with a little bit of water. And we're just going to take a measurement of it. And already we're seeing an increase in temperature. So a little over 200. Oh, well, the steam and stuff coming out. Temperature's starting to go down a little, but 
We were sitting at 195 last time. Now we're hovering around 99, 200 now. So still not as hot as I was hoping it was going to be, but that's definitely a significant change. So overall, I'm pretty pleased. I think we'll be able to get food done a little bit quicker again. And although I would say as far as a slow cooker goes, Instapot, mm, not really designed for that. You know, it has that functionality. I'd rather just have a traditional slow cooker. But anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, and thank you for your time.